La Curandera by Gloria Anzaldúa. I'll tell you how I became a healer. I was sick, my leg had turned white. Sobrino went to Wanda Villa, asked if Wanda Villa knew anyone who could cure me. Yes, Wanda Villa told him, there is a healer in Mexico. Wanda Villa crossed the border to bring the healer. When Wanda Villa didn't come back, Sobrino followed him and found the healer dead. Sobrino's leg became white. Wanda Villa prayed and prayed. Sobrino died. Wanda Villa thought, it doesn't matter if one is sick or not. What matters is that one thinks so. In his mind, Sobrino wanted to die. In his mind, he thought he was dying, so he died. The border patrol came, found El Sobrino dead. We'll take the body back to the other side, they said. No, said Wanda Villa. I'll bury him here. Under the ground, it doesn't matter which side of the border you're in. When they were out of sight, Wanda Villa opened his eyes. Wanda Villa went back across the border. The border patrol said, no way. She's dying, he told them, meaning me. The border patrol let him through. Wanda Villa found me in pain. The maggots in my body ate my flesh, my dress, my hair, my teeth. When Wanda Villa went to bury me, the ground where my body had lain was empty. There was nothing to bury. Wanda Villa saw pain crawling towards him. He backed away. Still, it followed him until he was pressed into the wall. He watched the pain climb up his feet, legs. When it reached his heart, it began to eat him. My thoughts caused this, he cried out. In his head, he made a picture of the pain backing off, of the pain sliding down his leg, of the pain crawling toward the door. Then Wanda Villa saw the pain turn around and come back. If I must die, then I'll die, he said, looking at his leg turning white. Wanda Villa kneeled to pray. Wanda Villa saw the pain crawling back to where my body had lain. He saw my clothes appear, saw my dress begin to move, saw me sit up and open my eyes. You are not dead, he said. You prayed for me to be well, I told him. No, I prayed for myself, he said. You are everyone. When you prayed for yourself, you prayed for all of us. Juan Davila looked into my eyes, saw the longing. You want to die, don't you, he said. No, I want to be with her, La Virgen Santa Sima. But you are with her, he said, eyes clear like a child. She is everywhere. And I heard the wind begin to blow. As I breathed the air in and out, I breathed her in and out. I walked in to my jacal to lie down. And there on the floor by my bed lay Juan de Villa asleep. Get up, Juan de Villa. Get in the bed. I lay in the bed and slept. When I woke up, I saw squirming serpents on the floor, shining serpents on the walls, serpents moving on the windows. A small fear appeared and entered me. I heard a big black snake say, we are your healing spirit guides. The serpents slithered off the walls. I couldn't see them anymore, but I felt them all around me. What do I do now, I asked them. We will teach you, they said, but first you must gather the herbs. Wanda Villa and I went into the fields. No, this way, Wanda Villa told me. I smiled and followed him. We found nothing but weeds. Kirandera, you knew there were no yerbitas here. Oh, there are a few, I said. Look behind that big weed. Juan de Villa bent down, saw a tiny Romero plant. When he reached out to pick it, I said, no, leave it. It's too small. The weeds are choking it, he said, and it got no leaves. Help it, I told him. I'll go get the hoe, he said. No, there's no time. The plant will die. She needs room, I said. The weeds began to move back. The Romero began to grow. The weeds moved further back. No, Vendejos, let's kill her, said a big, ugly Quillite. No, she's so pretty, the other said, holding him back. The tiny Romero grew and grew, told them, you're pretty too. The weeds became long, graceful grasses. They bound down to the Romero. Herbs of all kinds poked their heads out the earth, covered the fields. I've been in a cure and that since that day, and Juan de Vila has been my apprentice.